Aloha everyone and welcome back to Multifamily Live. I have a treat for us today. Um, if you've noticed for our podcast, we haven't really been doing many interviews lately. So I'm going to start bringing them back. And for our first interview, I want to bring back a dear, blessed friend of mine. His name is Dustin Heiner. Welcome back to the show, Dustin. Aloha, Peely. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Super excited to have you on here. We had you on last year just before your amazing, amazing conference called Rubicon. It was one of the first times we had met. It was an excellent show. If you all want to listen to it, go back to last year, look up Dustin, and it was an excellent show. And this is all about catching up. So Dustin, I want you to refresh my my listeners and my viewers. Who are you? And what do you do? Yeah. So, well, number one, I am definitely an investor. I invest in real estate. In fact, when I was 37 years old, I was blessed to be able to quit my job. And I love the term being successfully unemployed. Basically found a way to make money to provide for myself and my family without working that J-O-B is what I call it, the just overbroke job. And with that, I started investing back in 2006. That was before the crash. I started buying rental properties, you know, residential four units and below for cash flow. Now, the great thing about doing for cash flow was because I was not going for appreciation. And in 2006, all the quote unquote gurus were telling you and telling me, because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just trying to learn from anybody. They were saying, get passive income of like, you know, 25 or $50 a month, but you'll get appreciation and you'll be so happy about that. But then we know in the crash, everything tanked. It was horrible. And so everybody was going bankrupt. But I knew that I wanted to be able to become successful and employed. I want to stop working for somebody else. And here's a big reason why I, I shared this on your show last year, but I got laid off. I'll give the punchline. I got laid off from my job and I was working there 15 plus years. And then I realized, oh my goodness, anybody at any time could take away my ability to feed my family. And with that, I said, I need to make sure this never happens to me again. So I started buying property after property because I knew I wanted passive income because I wanted to be able to feed my family. Get, getting back to the appreciation, I didn't invest for appreciation. And I also knew the longer I hold this property, the more I'll make money. And then I realized, oh my goodness, I could literally give these properties to my kids. And this is creating generational wealth so that they will have this in the future. Plus, I'm teaching them how to actually invest. In fact, I'm really blessed. Um, my kids literally asked me, it was like last week, hey, hey, daddy, with all of our savings, you know, you have Rubicon coming up and it's going to be a great time to buy invest and invest in real estate in the next year or two years. You've been saying that all along. Can you help us to buy our first property? I'm like, yes, absolutely. I can. And so with investing for not appreciation, but cash flow, I eventually had enough money coming in. I had 30 plus properties that I had and each one were making me a minimum of $250 a month in passive income. And with that passive income, I realized, my goodness, well, if you think about it, $250 a month at one property, that's $3,000 a year. That's passive income. 10 properties, $2,500 a month in passive income, $30,000 a year without working. 20 properties is $5,000 a month, $60,000 a year. And I realized if I just scale my business, if I just buy more properties and have the business run itself so I don't do any work, I could literally quit my job. So that's what I did. I just kept buying property after property. And then I was, here's the fun part too. When you have 40 plus hours of your life back, not working for somebody else, you have the ability to do whatever you want. I love serving people and I love building businesses, two things I just love to do. And so what I decided to do was I was telling friends and coworkers and everybody, friends from church and everything, and telling them, I'm quitting my job. They said, well, how are you doing it? And I said, well, I invested in real estate. It works for me. I sleep at night and it makes me money. The second question really it came all the time. Will you show me? I'm like, oh, I guess I could show you. I like doing it. And then when I was teaching friends and family members and coworkers one-on-one, -on -one, I realized I loved it. It was so much fun because I see them change their life. And then I realized, man, I want to get this word out to more people. So fast forward, started a podcast, started a YouTube channel, started coaching and everything. Fast forward now even more. I've been doing this for like, I don't know, seven or eight years now, coaching people and created a conference, which is called the Real Estate Wealth Builders Conference that you came and just you and you and Jason, you guys knocked out of the park. I mean, it was so awesome having you guys share and teach and be there and really help develop this community. So that's what I do is I'm an investor. And then at the same time, I'm an educator. I love serving people and helping them to become 
awesome investors. In fact, last thing I'll quickly say is I have so many students now literally quitting their job faster than me. It took me about eight years to be, before I had enough properties to quit my job. My students are doing it in like two and three years. I'm just blown away. Now, that's not every single student, but I have many students that are doing it because just like you and I, Peely, we – already done this and we're giving everybody the the shortcuts or not necessarily the shortcut but like the right way to do it jump over this hurdle jump over this landmine and all that sort of stuff and so it's just a blessing now that you and i like we just get to serve people now and i think that is what draws me to you and to your platform and to rubcon is that you have such a and everyone around us let's let's say us has this servant leadership mentality. We want to give the glorious blessings that have already been bestowed on us. We want to let people know that this exists. This actually exists. Whether or not you want to quit your job, whether or not you have to quit your job, whether or not you have a job, you can learn how to do this. So let's dig a little deeper because it's been a year since we've talked. Rubicon is around the corner once again, and I'm super excited to join you again in in uh, Phoenix. Um, but what's changed? What's changed between last year and this year? And then I want to talk about about what else have you not shared with your audience, with the world about how we can move forward into the future together? But before that, let's talk about what's changed in this last year. Yeah, what's changed in this last year? So when I first started it, I just had a vision of serving my audience and then calling all my friends like you and lots of other people. There's 28 of us speakers last year. And let's bring our audience together and create a community that just so happens we have an event where we all come together, a three-day event where we're all helping and serving each other and connecting each other. It's a no sales pitch conference, like a lot of real estate conferences. You'll see a big booth in the back and from the stage, it's all hype. They'll say, no, run to the back. and go." It's normally $100,000, but it's $1,000 today. It's not about that. It's all about building a community. So that when I first started RubeCon last year, it was all about having a vision of what we can do. And then once it came to fruition, we had RubeCon last year. It was such a blessing to see that we developed a community and we have so many giving people that want to come and speak as experts because, you know, bringing their audience. Now, fast forward to now, what's changed now is so much more excitement for giving. That's, that's what I'm blessed about. I literally have 43, like Peely, you and Jason are four, one of, or two of 43 other expert investors that are giving. They're not being paid to come, to come teach. They're not going to be selling from the stage. They're saying, I have an audience too. Let me go ahead and bring my audience and the excitement from these, my friends. And like, obviously Peely, you and Jason are my friends, as well as the other speakers. What's great is we lead the vision of RubeCon as a giving conference, and that translates into the rest of the attendees. Last year, we definitely started that. We got that ball rolling. This year, I'm seeing so many more people, even the attendees, they're literally asking me, how can I volunteer? How can I serve? How can I help in the conference? Because I see the vision of what you're doing, and I want to be a part of it. So fast forward to now, 43 more. Actually, we have one more just, just came on. 43 speakers. It's a three day event. Last year was two days. Now it's three days. And on top of that, it's all giving. There's going to be more community time, more networking time, more parties, more stuff to be, well, ability to be around the awesome speakers like Peely. And one last thing I'll say is if you go to a lot of conferences or if you've been to conferences, you'll get people that are awesome like Peely and Jason They're that are different. They're that same caliber, but a different mindset. Like Peely, Jason, myself, and all the other speakers, we're givers. We want to give, so we're there to give. A lot of other people who like are at our caliber who don't have that same giving mentality, they'll fly in and then jump on their breakout session or their keynote and then fly right back out. They don't hang out. They don't stay there because it's not necessarily what they want to do. But what we do is we're there to grow ourselves. I grew a ton from last year's conference in my real estate investing, and we're there to help everybody out. So there's so much more excitement and so many more awesome things coming with RubeCon 23. That's why I love RubeCon, because when we were there last year, we didn't know what to expect. We were like, ah, it's in Phoenix. 
Dustin's a cool guy. The people that are there are amazing. I mean, you have Annie Dickerson, who is a dear friend of mine. I feel like I've grown up with her in the real estate arena. Um, and just being in that type of energy, that type of growth situation. And I firmly believe if you're on the fence about going, whether wherever you are in your real estate career, this is for you. This is for you because no matter who you are, you have something to learn and you have something to teach. So if you happen to be gracing the stage, great. I feel blessed that I get to be on your stage. I get to teach people. I get to let people know what my knowledge is, but I am also there to learn. I'm also there to figure out what it is that I don't know. And the the types of rooms you had last year, the types of the, the knowledge base that you brought together, I learned so much. So let's now step away from Rubicon and let's talk about real estate in general. What is something about either today's market or what you're currently doing in your real estate journey that could benefit my listeners? Yeah, no, I... What's interesting is I started investing back in 2006, and this was before the crash. And when, when I say interesting, right, right now what I'm seeing is we're almost like getting into like the 20 or 2008 where it was like getting to the bubbles getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then obviously the crash happened. Now I'm not saying there's going to be a crash now, but what I am saying, we had such a huge run up in the last two years, like from 2020 to 2022, we've had such a run up in Phoenix alone. I know that the market from 2020 into 2022 or at the end of 2022, it rose, the, the prices of homes rose 50%. That is, that's crazy in my opinion. It's absolutely crazy. And then now from the top of in 2022, which was like September-ish, it's already dropped down 14. Last night, this was in January, late December, generally January when I heard this, it's probably like 18% now, but it's dropped, just dropping very fast because interest rates are going higher you have prices going lower. Now they're going to go even faster, low, in my opinion, lower it faster because sellers are so nostalgic. Oh my goodness. Six months ago, I could have got this much for a year. I could have got this much for it. So they hold on. But as soon as the floodgates open and as soon as all these, I'm also seeing lots of layoffs, lots of you know, com big companies like Google laying off 10,000, um, uh, Facebook laying off 10,000, mm -hmm. like these big companies Google, are laying Facebook, off lots of people. Twitter, you name it. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be a tidal wave of uh, lack of money coming through the system. So what I'm seeing now, not necessarily saying it's going to be 2008 all over again, but what I'm seeing is for me as an investor, for all of us, for you listening to this now, I want you to realize that this is going to be the best time ever in our lifetime to invest in real estate. Now, one people, a lot of people ask me, well, Dustin, but interest rates are so high. How is that going to make it easier on us or better for us? Well, here's the thing. We're investors. Interest rates, we, you know this, Peely, 100%, but I got to share to all the audience. I, I don't, we don't pay the interest. We don't pay the mortgage on our property. Like, I don't have to get a job to pay my mortgage on these rental properties. My tenants pay them. At the same time, I buy them for less than they are the market value. So I capture equity, even though the interest rates are higher. It doesn't matter because I'm still making money in passive income and my tenants are paying that. They're getting a good property for rent. And on top of that, here's what's great. When you invest in any type of um, investing, obviously multifamily is a little different, but when you're looking at the market in general, because the market in the real, the residential will drop before the multifamily, it'll, it'll quickly, you'll see it quickly drop. But with that, the multifamily will change as well. But a lot of people ask me, well, Dustin, with interest rates rising, doesn't it make, us hard, make it harder for us? Well, I, what's interesting is the people that really get affected by interest rates are homeowners that want to buy and live in a home. Well, they are literally priced out of the market now. When you had a 3% interest rate, you could a $2,000 a month mortgage could potentially buy you a $450,000 house. Now with a 7%, it's only $250,000. So they're priced out of the market. So prices come down. Then multifamily will eventually catch up in prices coming down, which is going to be even better for us to buy it even lower to make more money in cash flow. So I'm seeing things are happening and we just need to be 
smart investors where we buy good deals. Even in 2021, 22, whatever everything was going up, we bought good deals that made us money every single month, just like you were buying properties. I was seeing you watching. I was like, oh man, this is so awesome seeing how many properties you guys were you're, you're developing to, to buying to... If you have a good investor that you're working with, like like Peely and Jason, keep working with them. They are going to show you the right way to absolutely invest. So you're going to be protected, insulated. In fact, in 2008, where everybody was going bankrupt because I was investing for cash flow, because I knew my business, I made money if the market went up, down, or sideways. If you hang with uh, Jason and Peely, 100%, they're going to make sure that you're making money all through this. If there is a crash or a downturn, you'll be protected because you know how to do it right. That's the key, right? Knowing. So regardless, because a lot of a lot of investors I'll talk to, especially newer investors, they're like, "Well, I don't have the money. I don't have the information. I don't have." Okay, let's stop being excusable, folks. Let's take responsibility. Look at your finances. Number one. So this, I'm going to give you some real, like, actionable advice. Look at your finances. Number one. Number two. Get educated. If you don't know how to do it congratulations, you're in the right place. You've taken the first step. You're listening to this podcast. Boom. You have entered real estate, real estate education. Then find those mentors, those people that you trust to let you know Rubicon is a great place to start where to go from there. Because then you need to pick what type of real estate that you're going to do and immerse yourself into it. This is the time to learn if you don't know. And now back to what you're saying about interest rates going higher, you know, whatever it is, whatever the excuse is, it's never going to be a perfect market. I remember when we entered into wholesaling and flipping in 2013, I didn't think it was a perfect market. I thought the I I, I looked at the I looked at the numbers and people that were investing in like 2010 were like, oh my goodness, the market's so much higher now, blah blah blah, and this is not the best time to get in. It was 2013, 2016 when we get into large multifamily. I remember being be, thinking like some of the numbers then were, were risky. Like we we got we took down our first 94 unit and then it took us almost a year to get the next one because we were being a little bit risk at first. There were there were properties that we were offering on that we could have offered so much more on, but we didn't we didn't we thought it was risky. We thought it was too expensive. And then the market kept on rising. So no matter what the numbers tell you, no matter what the talking heads are telling you, you need to claim responsibility for number one, your own finances, and then number two, your, your risk tolerance, and number three, getting it done. There's always going to be an excuse not to do it right now. The market's going to go up. The market's going to go down. It's going to go sideways. It's whatever, whatever it happens to the market, no that you'll be able to weather it if you have the right knowledge and the right team around you. Does that makes sense? Absolutely. It 100%. And here's a great saying that everybody needs to realize and remember. It's you don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real, real estate and wait because yeah. over time, like the properties I bought in 2006, I still own them and I'm making almost triple what in passive income, what I made when I first bought it. And when I make a minimum of $250 a month in passive income from every property over time, rents just keep going up. And so you buy real estate and then wait because over time it's going to work out. But also to not, but, but to add to what you're just saying, I love the, I guess maybe it's a proverb, but when is the best time to plant a tree? Well, it was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. The next best time is literally today. You do not want to be thinking 20 years from now, man, I was listening to Peely's awesome podcast and I wanted to invest, but I just put it off. And 20 years later, you're thinking, I wish I would have done it back then. No, you want to be the opposite of that. You want to be thinking, I was listening to Peely and Jason all the time. I took action 20 years ago and look at my life now. And so if you didn't get started in 2013... If I didn't get started in 2006, even when 2006, it was hard for me to buy. I actually, from California where I lived, I started investing in Ohio because I couldn't afford California prices back then and the rents were so low. 
I made it work. I figured out a way to make it work. And if you're hanging around Jason and Peely long enough, you come to RubeCon. Like I said, I literally have 43 awesome, real, like literally expert real estate investors just like Peely and myself there to just give and there to teach and help you become an even better real estate investor. I go to learn as well. And so with that, if you realize that right now is the best time to plant a tree, right now is the best time to invest. Now, there are bad investments, but if you buy the right investment, you find the right deal that's going to be just like Jason and Peely talk about, and as well as myself, if we show you the right way to do it and you find a good deal like that, jump on it and you will be blessed in the end because over time, like I said, you buy real estate and then wait. So I'm 100% on board with you on that. I love this. And I want to dig into what you said about planting the tree now. And I'm really big on actionable steps. So Dustin, before I let you go, I want you to dig into planting a tree now. How can our audience plant their tree right now, get started or continue on? Because there's so many of there's so many people that I talk to these days who are just like, oh, I'm just, I'm kind of, I'm just gonna sit on my cash. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for things. And I'm just like, okay, I have a lot of people who waited in 2016 and they wish they didn't. I have a lot of people who waited in 2013 and they wish they didn't. I wish I'd known what I knew now 20 years ago, like you said, but I didn't. But now you have people that, you have surrounded yourself, and I'm talking to our audience, you've surrounded yourself by incredible people who know what they're talking about in real estate and or you have a real estate portfolio. So what's keeping you from growing it? So again, I'm going to pose the question to you before, before I keep on going because you know I'll keep on talking. How can our audience, how can everyone listening right now plant their seed now? And I like the way you ask a question in planting the seed because you don't just plant a tree. We got to, it starts from a seed. And what I love to do is share with my students and my audience and everybody I talk to is that I usually get the question, should I save for investing? Should, or should I start learning now? Or should I start building a business? Or should they have all these ors? And I'm saying, meaning like this or this or this. And I say, those are not uh, dependent on the other. Like you don't have to finish one in order to get to the other. And so why don't we start saving now? Why don't we start educating ourselves now? Why don't we start working towards everything that our goals are? Because it's planting a seed. And as that seed grows and, and gets watered and gets fertilized and gets bigger, you're putting effort in. Eventually, once that seed gets into a tree, you got to keep working at it. But at the same time, eventually, let's say that tree gets to be big enough where it's literally just it doesn't need any more work because it's so well grounded and rooted down that it's now grabbing water from underneath the soil. It's now getting its own life from the sun and everything. So it's on its own growing. Now with that, here's my big suggestion. I absolutely suggest you should 100% be learning how the process, what, let's say you want to be multifamily. If you want to be residential, like I do, if you want to do Airbnbs, whatever it might be, you need to start really learning from experts like Jason and Peely. If you come to RubeCon, you're going to find so many experts that they're just giving. They want to help, but you need to learn. And so imagine this, imagine you're surfing. So surfing, you have to catch a wave in order to surf. Well, if you start paddling after the wave passes you, because you need to get that momentum to catch that wave. If you start paddling after the wave passes you, you're not going to catch it. So imagine if you don't even learn, if you don't start saving now, if you don't start be getting around awesome people that can help you and be a part there with you, you're going to start paddling after the wave passes. Because honestly, my opinion, I think in the next one, two, and three years are going to be some of the best times ever to invest in real estate. So what we want to do now, plant that seed now, start watering it, start fertilizing, start building it up, just like you start paddling before this wave of awesome real estate investing comes, start paddling now so that you can get that momentum to catch that wave. And then you ride that wave all the way in. Back in 2008, I was barely ready. Like I just barely started paddling and I caught that wave and I bought a ton of properties. It was a blessing. But I'm also thinking it might happen again. I was, you know, back in 2008, I thought it might happen again. Let me be even more ready if and when it happens. My belief is now it's almost time. So plant that seed now. Start educating yourself. 
Start saving money. Get out of debt. Stop going worse into debt. If you need to cut expenses, do that. But then listen to Jason Peely's podcast. I have my podcast as well. I Master Passive Income Podcast. It's usually me, a solo show, just, just like Jason and Peely. We love just serving. So we're giving. And so I'm actually putting this show on my podcast as well because Jason and Peely and myself, we just love to give. And so if you start learning now, saving money, cutting expenses, even go to your boss and say, hey, boss, I believe that because of how much I serve this company and how much well I do, I deserve a raise because of what I do. Long story short, we got to get more money and invest that money. Plant that seed today. Start watering, start fertilizing, start building it up. Once it starts and gets sprouted, it's going to eventually be a huge tree like Jason and Peely and myself. I'm blessed now where I literally don't have to do anything with my real estate. It just keeps growing on its own. And so if you keep moving now, plant that seed now, in 20 years, you're going to look back and say, I am so blessed that I planted that tree 20 years ago. Now it's on its own and it does everything for me, just like Jason and Pelia myself. I love that. And I love that you said, I am so blessed. Let's come from that. As we close this podcast, let's come from that thought process. I am so blessed. So we are blessed to be here today. We are blessed to be able to share this podcast with you. What is one other way that you could bless our audience by, I actually, I know another way that you could bless our audience. Could you let everyone here know a little bit more about Rubicon, how they can find you and how they can get a ticket to Rubicon? Absolutely. And what is it? What is it? So it's May 4th through the 6th here in Phoenix. It's going to be beautiful. And we're also Cinco de Mayo. We're going to be in Phoenix. We're at a fiesta. It's going to be terrific. And it's going to be a downtown for us, or downtown uh, Phoenix in the Sheraton. It's going to be, it's an amazing venue. I'm super blessed to be a part of this whole entire thing. And if you use the promo code Jason or the promo code Peely, whichever one you like more, I don't, I won't tell them who. <laughs> <laughs> But if you go to rubcon.com, R E W B, just you know, abbreviation, real estate wealth builders, rubcon.com, so R E W B C O N.com, you'll find just literally click on buy tickets, use the promo code out of any, there's different packages, like let's say basic pro or VIP, where you actually get to hang around the speakers. Use that promo code, either Jason or Peely, and you will be able to get 10% off. So, absolutely, we want to be there with you to show you, and you will be blown away at the level of giving and service that people just like if you love Jason and Peely, you're going to love all these other people that are there. And also I would love if anybody wants to get started investing, how I invest, which is residential for you and below. I have a free course. I, I love giving it out. I absolutely give it out. So if you text the word rental, R E N T A L rental to three, three, seven, 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 Rental the three three seven seven seven. I'll literally give it to you. Show you how to find an area of the country anywhere to invest. How to build the business and scale the business. Quit your job. You can even go to masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. Masterpassiveincome.com forward slash free course. I also have my podcast that Jason and Peely are coming on as well. I'm putting you guys on there as well. And oh, I also, I, I say, uh, funny enough, I actually like Instagram. So if you want to reach out to me on Instagram, I get DMs all the time. The Dustin Heiner. So T-H-E, Dustin Heiner. And I'm not that arrogant, Peely. It's, it's the is the only handle I could come up with. So T-H-E, <laughs> Dustin Heiner. Reach out to me on there. I'd love to help you out. That's the whole goal. In fact, Jason and Peely, just like myself, they, we realize that the more people that we serve in this life, the better our lives gets and the better everybody's life gets. And the last thing I'll share is that in life, what we want to do, we want to develop these four different legacies for our lives. Number one, we want a money legacy, enough money to be able to buy whatever we want, not worry about bills. That's a money legacy. But that then leads into a time legacy. We want to have time to do whatever we want, 40 plus hours of our life back. So money leads into time. Time then leads into relationships because you have more time. You can develop that with your kids, your spouse, your family, your church, your service, whatever. So you have money leads into time. Time leads into relationships. Then you get to the place where you can be where like Jason Peely and myself, the service legacy. When you have all four leading up to where you're now fulfilled, money, time, uh, relationships, and service, you then have unlocked, honestly, a whole new 
sense of gratitude and vision and purpose because now my goal is now to help 1 million people to invest in real estate and hopefully become financially independent. And RubeCon giving out the courses and podcasts, like and just like Jason and Peely, that's our way of serving. And honestly, we probably get so much more blessed by our serving than you receiving, just like, you know, getting all this stuff for free. So definitely come and be a part of RubeCon. We'd love to see you there. Love to hang out with you and definitely keep listening to Jason and Peely's podcast. It's terrific. You can do it. And we're there to help you. Well, thank you so much, Dustin. I cannot wait to see you in Phoenix. And for everyone that's listening today, remember, plant the seed now. You don't want to think 20 years from now that you didn't plant that seed that you could have. The best time to do it is right now. And know that you are blessed. You have so much knowledge right now that all you need to do is take that next step, whether it is getting more knowledge of real estate, whether it is getting more business knowledge, whether whether it is figuring out your own finances, figure out your next step and simply take it. So this is Peely for Multifamily Live. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have an excellent, blessed day filled with aloha, peace, and so much love. Aloha. Aloha.